What you doing? Ice fishing. Well, that's all you're gonna catch. There's no fish in there. All right, guys, enough of the goofing around. We've got Chris here from the Wooded Beardsman's channel. He is my brother. And today we are going to solve the problem of having no fish. What are we doing? <laughs> what? I didn't even have a hook on there. What? It's just a larf. Oh, he's got the, he's got the sinker? Just a gig, just a laugh. I knew there was no fish in there. But we need to get fish in there because how are we going to catch any fish? That's true. So we've got a plan. Today we are getting the pond ready to have fish in it. We're going to actually stock this pond. We've got a little bit of technology. We're going to have the AccuView. Uh, AquaView. AquaView. AccuView? That's, no. <laughs> that's something else. AquaView camera. We're going to send it down there. We're going to have a look down to see clarity and quality of water we we're gonna also measure the depth because we have to make sure it is deep enough now we had fish in here last summer we did like a test run we have five really large fish you can actually check that video out on my brother's channel and they lasted they lasted uh pretty much all summer right until the end so this plan we're gonna add probably what 30 fish 50 50 we're gonna go 50 <laughs> fish 50 30 to 50 30 to 50 we're not gonna exactly know exactly how many we're gonna have but 30 to 50 fish but we have to deal with the aeration issue because we need air underwater and uh, that'll help with the quality clarity of the water as well so what do you got there you got you seeing anything see anything at all i do actually here look real quick before well, it dies again it's murky it's full of stuff i haven't hit the bottom yet and there we go we hit look the bottom that. we got it's pretty clear we got some leaves down there uh little bugs it looks like there's some bugs swimming around which is good or sediment or something but it, it is cloudy i am surprised it is that cloudy and then the battery's, oh, dead, the battery's dead all right so i should charge the battery you should charge the battery and well we, maybe we can show that little piece of footage uh, hopefully we can yeah so anyways there is um we did skate on this pond pretty much all uh all winter time and, and the the ice is of questionable quality I bet you I make my brother feel nervous when I walk on it like this with his camera. What do you think, Chris? Do you think I'm gonna go through? Have you ever fallen through? I That's what I keep asking him. I I've fallen through three times already and it's cold. So actually there's a story. There's a story back in my childhood. There was this beaver dam and it was just ice was melting in the forest and I was at this beaver dam and I was trying to break this beaver dam as a kid, probably like 10 years old. And uh, I got too close to the edge and I kind of uh, started floating, my back end started floating out and I was holding onto the ice with my, my hands splayed out my back. I could feel it kind of pivoting downstream and my brother came out of the bushes and he, I think he said, what you doing? And I said, I can't move. I couldn't get up. I couldn't, like I was floating out and, and Chris actually came and saved me. So um, I owe him for that one. Thanks for saving my life, Chris, that one time when we were 10. That's the only time I've gone, I wouldn't really go through the ice, my, my legs were floating down river. We're gonna, we, got the, uh, we got our post from last year where we uh, had our, our solar panel with our aeration. Where's that solar aeration thing from? So that's uh, from a guy called the Dugout Dude, dugoutdude.ca. Dugout There'll be a link in the description below if you guys need an aerator. Yeah, we're gonna pump lots of oxygen into here so that it's ready for the fish because fish like oxygen. And because this is a closed system, it's not going to get like, it's, there's not wind action. Right. And so that's the biggest problem with having fish in a pond this size is by the end of the winter, they have no oxygen left. So we might not be able to skate on this next year if we leave the fish in here. Mm. So we have to think about that. We might harvest all the fish and we're gonna also see if this is a feasible size to have 30 to 50 fish, we'll see. So we're pre-aerating it. That's right. All right, so we got the solar panel here. This is the uh, aerator. So it's powered by the sun, which is really cool. Dugoutdude.ca is where you get this thing. And uh, I don't know, can, you, can it well, turn on? Can you hear it already? Anytime you kind of put this thing to the sunshine, the aeration starts already. It's crazy efficient. So let's put it on the post over here. So the guts behind this thing is there's a little set screw in here and you tighten it onto the post and it allows it to not fly away. But there's three little pumps here that filter the air. There's little filters, spare filters that uh, basically take the pump, run it, and then send it down a uh, compressor pipe down into the water. And that's the other part of it I haven't hooked up yet. I'm gonna go grab it now. This is the business end of the area. So this has got little tiny holes in it and that's what forces the air and it's got a little five pound weight on the end of it. And this is the uh, compressor hose. And then this guy here, this is the end you hook up to your thing, which requires no power to run except for the solar power, which is, so if you have a remote location and you wanna have air in your pond and it's not close to hydro, this is the way to go. So 
So this is the end here and uh, it's got a little barb fitting on here so you don't even need clamps or anything, you just kind of slide it on. In the summertime you can spit on it and slide it on and it slides on a lot easier. And then this guy, you can't really see it, but there's tiny little micro holes inside that little rubber membrane that allows the air to kind of float up. You know, if you have your pond in your front yard and you want to see little bubbles swim up, this thing's really, it's actually really cool looking. Oh, I'm down. I'm in the water. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That was close. I think I was up to about there. <laughs> now you know where the boards are there. <laughs> I I got snow in my boot. I didn't go down far. I didn't go down too far. That was close. Show the air coming out of the thing. Here, look at it. So you can see it's puffed up. You can see a little bit of air going through there. We got to tilt this. We got to tilt this more towards the sun. Watch your noggin there. So now we gotta make a slightly bigger hole in the pond to drop this guy down in order to produce our oxygen. We gotta pre-aerate it in order to have oxygen in the pond while we put our fish in. You don't wanna do it afterwards because the fish could die. Oh my god. We got ourselves a nice little hole here that should fit inside there so you can see oh yeah she's bubbly she's got some bubbles coming out of it already that's gonna make short work of the ice on the pond we kind of want it facing upwards because it'll help the air get up easier I don't know if it makes that much of a difference it could be on its face it's still gonna have the air go in there we got we see bubbles yet I think it's trying. Here you go. Limited battery power. We're gonna drop her down and see if we got some air popping out of there. Um, we are missing the sun, so <laughs> it's cloudy day and uh, probably a thick cloud, which means it's gonna be really struggling to produce air. Ah, it's got no batteries. <laughs> okay. You could hear it kind of struggling. Yeah. Like you could hear it, it's kind of like, but there's not enough sun. No, it's like. I think it's cloudy, the cloudiest day we've had so far. But uh, it'll start cooking when we get a Sunday. All right, so we're just gonna check the depth of the uh, of this spot. I think this is the deepest spot, so I'm gonna send her down there. Just under eight feet in depth right here. I wonder if it's any, I'm hitting something. Something was stuck there. There we go, we got bubbles coming up. I think I was hitting the, I was hitting the top of the, I think it, I was hitting the top of the aerator. Eight, we're at eight. And then I think that's where it's floating. We're at nine. Uh, we're about 10 feet, 10 feet of pond. This is probably the deepest section right here. But we're gonna punch a couple more holes in to check the area. So we wanna figure out exactly how much volume of water is in this pond. Cause we're gonna give that to Clark over at Linden's Fish Hatchery. And uh, he's got a formula, he punches it into a computer. He can tell us how many fish will thrive in this amount of water. Eight feet. Seven feet. Seven feet. Five feet. Four feet there. 15 plus 23. What's that? Why can't I figure that out? 15 plus 22 is eight, 38 feet. Is that right? Is that right, 38 feet? So there's about a 38 foot diameter circle, roughly. And it's about 10 feet deep at the very deep. So it's probably like a bowl shaped. I don't know, there's probably some math to determine the exact volume of water in this pond. But uh, we'll, let, we'll let the Linden guy, Clark over at Linden Fish Hatchery figure it out. Maybe you guys can figure it out. Leave the comments. Leave a comment below to think how many gallons of water there is in the pond. And therefore, how many fish we can put inside the pond. So the sun just kind of got a little brighter. I think the cloud got a little bit thinner. And the aerator's pumping oxygen into our pond. Now you can see the bubbles coming up through the hole. 
it's uh it works really really well it's very efficient at what it does like i said it's not even it's not even sunny i can't see the sun but it is working which is cool that's going to do a lot of good for the pond it's going to open it up quicker and get some oxygen in there for our fish so now we're at the stage of the game where the maple syrup has been boiled down a significant amount i don't want to go down much lower than i just did because uh, it has a tendency to uh, burn boil over so what i'm going to do is i'm going to filter it out of this tap and uh and put it into buckets and then kind of do like a finish boil on something I can control the heat on. So, uh, so yeah, I got a cheesecloth here. Uh, picked it up from the dollar store. There, there is a specialty filter that uh, I'm going to further filter it with uh, in order to, you know, get rid of a lot more of the particulates. But uh, this is going to have to do. I had some, I had some truck issues this morning. It wouldn't start to actually go to the supply store in order to, uh, in order to get the filter. So we're going to make do with cheesecloth. Let's look at the big chunks out. I'm going to just hmm, make sure I can wrap it up like that. Funnel and something to to kind of do this. But this is how. This is how I'm going to do it. I've done it in the past like this, and uh, it's worked out well. Again, you're just you're catching the big stuff. Get ourselves a bucket, and we're gonna open. Well guys, that's the closest I've ever gotten to boiling it down almost precisely to a T on maple syrup in the fire, wood-fired evaporator. Generally, you take it off a little bit before this, but it's almost, it's almost at the consistency of maple syrup. I don't have to boil it down further, but I'm going to. I gotta refilter this with a fine filter, like a proper maple syrup filter in order to bottle it and not have that sediment in the bottom. You can see it's coming out here. It's pretty darn clean, clear. Probably gotta boil down just a little bit more, but, uh, but I'm pretty pleased with that. What you doing, Chris? <laughs> Cleaning the forest. Cleaning the forest, you're raking the forest. You're... Well, we're gonna make a food plot. A food plot? I think this is like erosion control, isn't it? Well, it's both, see? <laughs> now you're getting to the crux of it. You want me to explain on your channel? Well, I can, uh, people are, they, the... they always complain that you don't come out and help. Well, I'm helping. I'm helping behind the scenes all the time. Yes, that's right. So, well, anyway, here. Hang on, hang on. The thing is, the hill is falling into the water. <laughs> It's the Coles notes. Yeah, the Coles notes is we got a little bit of erosion issue. We've got an extreme amount of rain past season. And uh, what's happening is, is this hill is slowly following into the water. And uh, what we're trying to do today is we're going to basically rake all of the sticks up and then we're going to plant some, is it alfalfa, clover? It, we can't, we're not going to say it a lot because yeah, we got some rape, alfalfa, clover. It, rape is a real thing. I don't know what kind of what is that? It's like it's some sort of I don't know. It's a plant animals like to eat. It's a yes. It's a plant animals like to eat. So that's the, the to stabilize the ground. We're gonna plant some more trees. But first, what we're gonna do is I got some geotextile fabric. We're gonna lay in here, and then we're gonna pile a whole pile of rocks on top of it to kind of give us a bank. And the, and the reason I think it's because it's just it's just you know the, the nature of clay. Clay likes to kind of just shear off. And the top cell really never really established here. So that's kind of what we're, we're trying to prevent. We're trying to prevent the erosion. So we're doing erosion control and uh, we're getting the pond ready for fish. Because ideally we want really clear water. So what's happening is all the silt and whatnot is running into the pond and uh, it's causing us to have kind of a cloudy water. Uh, last year we had a couple fish in here, five or six fish, and they lasted well into August before Chris ate them all. It wasn't the water quality, it was the Chris that ate them. They were delicious. Yeah, they were delicious. Well, I didn't, I think I had some smoked fish anyway. So that's the plan. It's to stabilize the thing. We got some hay bale, straw bales in there that, uh, that act as a really good filter. And uh, if you guys paid attention, last uh, fall, that's where the water line was. So we've, we've gained like 10 feet worth of water. I, I, like it's just crazy amount of water. So that's, that was the old edge of the, uh, of the existing pond. So that's kind of where we want to reclaim to is right at that edge. This is kind of like the sandy beach area or muddy area so yeah anyways let's get uh we're gonna get some fabric down some rocks we're gonna move some rocks from over there put them over here and uh stabilize it
All right, well, this progress update report. Uh, this is an entire, pretty much about six hours worth of moving rock. We've got uh, a pretty good, like, bunker established. Uh, I'm pretty confident that this is going to prevent the erosion from occurring. Chris is not so convinced that it's gonna stop it. Uh, maybe you guys can leave your comments down below what your opinion is. I, th I think I think as long as we slow down the water enough to uh, to prevent it from going quickly into the pond and eroding this little area here, this this area kind of is getting beat up over the couple of, over the last couple of years. So I think once this establishes and we you know get some grass or some maybe some cedar trees planted in this kind of a wet area here, and it prevents it from uh, further further turned into mud. Anyway, so I think, like I said, I think because the, uh, the hay bales were where the original pond was, it's kind of, the, the water's come up, it's got really deep. So anyways, that's, uh, that should prevent us from having, you know, our silty sand and stuff wash into the pond, making our water cloudy. So uh, pretty good shape, right? We're pretty good shape for fish, aren't we? What you doing there, Rachel? We're doing the last filter of our lovely maple syrup. Look how wonderfully amber that is. And hopefully for the last time this season. Last time? Yes. We got is... more, we got more to boil. Oh. This is just... So what we're doing here is uh, we boiled it down, further boiled it on the propane boiler. And then we've got this filter sock that we picked up at the maple syrup supply place. And what we do is we put it into a coffee uh, thing. What's this thing called? A coffee thing. And then that allows us to heat it up so we can actually pour it out of the spout to get into the little jars. I think it used to be an old coffee percolator, actually, that we've taken all the guts out of. The gutted percolator. But it's metal, easy to clean, and it has a nice spout to pour into our containers. Nice. If you guys haven't figured out already that I am not necessarily the greatest cook when it comes to preparing meals. So what I have today is my newest sponsor, HelloFresh, and I have my quite capable, talented wife, Rachel, and she's going to help me cook something. Let's get right to it and let's just see how easy it is. This is the first time I've ever tried HelloFresh, so you're gonna have a first-hand experience on how easy it is and if you're wondering why we're kind of being a little bit quiet, it's because the little one is sleeping. We don't want to wake her up. In the back of this thing, it's got all the directions. There's like six steps. How hard can it be? I'm just, she's here for moral support more than anything else. But let's get, let's get cooking and I'm going to see how easy this really is. HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick and easy recipes that minimizes prep and makes cleanup a breeze. One of the things I like about HelloFresh is they pre-package all your ingredients. You're not wasting anything. You're using exactly what you need to make the meal you want, and there's no waste. I like that. HelloFresh is up to 72% cheaper than dining at restaurants. The first meal kit company that is carbon neutral. Nearly all of its packaging is recyclable. HelloFresh recipes include pre-portioned ingredients. That means there's less prep for you and there's less wasted food when you're done. Personally, I think the best thing about HelloFresh is that it takes the prep out of cooking. So generally speaking, my wife does most of the cooking, but when it's my turn to cook, I always turn to HelloFresh and say, here we go, we're eating something delicious tonight. Did I mention it saves me from going to the grocery store to pick up all my food? Everything's pre-portioned. All I gotta do is follow the simple directions and I've got a delicious meal in no time at all. You look at the picture and you look at our meal. The only thing different is that our bowl is blue. Look at, same, same, perfect. So let's, let's dig in before it gets cold because I gotta try this stuff. Or chickens cooked to perfection. I've had the vegetables, they're good. <laughs> I ate a lot of vegetables. Oh, they are good. I'm gonna pat myself. No, I'm not gonna pat myself in the back. You did a good job. <laughs> I did I did some of the work. You did. You cut the chicken. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code Modern Suffer Lines 16 and get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. What are you guys waiting for? Head to HelloFresh.com, 
Use code Modern Self Reliance 16 and you get up to 16 free meals and three gifts. So another day, another pair of boots. How do you feel about those? How do they feel? It's just did, just did like it? Christmas. These are beautiful, nice and light, aren't they? Yeah, I bet they're nice and warm too. Of course, with the, I'll find out pretty soon. Yeah. I've got the I got the same. Well, I got the more camouflage version of them. I've been wearing them for uh, months now. So yeah. they've been they've gone through an entire winter, and uh, yeah, so far so good. Yeah, nice and light. Good. Thanks, High C. Yeah, thank you, High C. You're gonna have to you're gonna give a report on that later. Yeah, that's uh, good. So far, so good. Thumbs up. Well, guys, we're at the Linden Fish Hatchery. We this is where we're going to be getting our fish, and uh, you guys can get the fish here as well. So Linden Fish Hatchery, uh, you can look them up. Uh, they're in New Dundee, but you guys, uh, if you want to bring the entire family out here, you guys can go uh, fly fishing or just simply fishing. It, it takes the the hassle out of fishing, so you just kind of pull up. Yeah, you go walk over there, you sit by the uh, the picnic table and you cast your line out and hopefully you catch a fish. It's a pretty good chance you are because there are thousands of fish in this pond. And uh, I believe their, their fishing is open to the public on June 4th. So if you guys want to check them out, uh, again, Linden Fish Hatchery. We're just going to, uh, we're collecting our fish for our pond. You can actually buy fish here too if you want, if you have yourself your own pond and you want to stock it. These guys, uh, these guys are the ones to call. My success as a fisherman is not, uh, it's not legendary or anything. So maybe not, who knows? I don't think it has to be in this pond. There's probably like 5,000 or 6,000 fish in this little area here. So. I gotta count the number of casts <laughs> right. to see. I'll see how many it takes. All right. I'm on number three now. Oh, got one. Got one? Yeah. Oh, I had, I had one. Oh, do you lose him? Oh, oh he's got him. He still got him. Yeah. Oh, oh, I lost it. Okay, well, we'll have to go for cast number four. Yep. He's on. Oh, oh off again. <laughs> Got a good hook set there now? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, Mr. Put that down quick or else he's gonna get you a hook. Let's hook this up. There you go, fish on. Yep, success. I thought I was gonna be uh, <laughs> skunked <laughs> in a stocked pond, which wouldn't surprise me <laughs> from my uh, my background. But uh, anyways, I'm glad I got a fish. Clean fish, look at that. Don's eating good tonight. <laughs> which one's which? This one's mine, it's got a little dirt on it. Oh, mine's bigger then. It's not about the size. <laughs> Two caught it first. I think mine's a female. Mine looks like a, I don't know, it's got different markings on it, but. That's are about like three, four pounders. This pond is full of fish. You guys want to come? Like, bring a kid here. There we go, done. All right, we're all set. And my brother and I, the Wooded Beardsman, we actually had a little bit of a fishing competition. If you want to check our fishing competition, see who won, you can actually check it out on his channel, the Wooded Beardsman. <laughs> Don actually, uh, he caught one as well. So yeah, if you want to check him out, uh, you can go to Wooded Beardsman on YouTube and uh, see who won the fishing competition. Now let's go, let's go look at our fish. We're gonna do the official introduction. This is uh, Clark from Linden's Fish Hatchery. You're the man, right? I we're, try to be sometimes. We're gonna get the formalities out of the way. This is, uh, what do you think that is? Uh, I'm gonna say this is maple syrup. There you go. There's some fresh from this year's maple syrup. I awesome. tend to give anybody that supports my channel maple syrup. It's fresh from this year. It's oh. not It's not used motor oil, it's, it's fresh, fresh. Like that is very, very fresh stuff. We'll test this out tomorrow morning. Absolutely, you know what? Just keep it in your pocket and just take shots every once in a while. I'll keep you running around. <laughs> Nobody will uh, be guessing. I'll put, get a brown paper bag, we'll be good to go. That's right, it'll give you diabetes by the end of the day, but you'll be, you'll <laughs> be worth it. 
All right, so you're gonna give us a little bit of a tour, I, I, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, sure. All right, so and then we're gonna load up some fish and we're gonna be on our way. So like, easy peasy, right? That's uh, the goal, as okay. easy as we can get anyways. Awesome. Clark's gonna give us a little explanation of what exactly he does here, what we're gonna, what we're gonna see. Yeah, so we're gonna go through a little bit of the life cycle of the trout up into the size that you're gonna get them from, uh, from us for your pond. So we start with a brood stock. So fish start spawning at around three years of age. We collect the eggs and then those eggs take about 18 days to develop eyes. Then we get a machine picker that'll pick all the live ones and the good ones and sort, or the live ones and the dead ones and sort them. And then we'll incubate them for around another 10 days. They'll hatch, we start feeding them. And then after about a month of being on feed, they'll reach, um, it's usually about an inch and a half. We start moving them to progressively larger tanks. And every time we're moving them into a larger tank with better water, flow, better oxygen, because they can handle more velocity. So if you have in your pond, there's not gonna be a lot of water turning over, but in a natural environment, they have a stream and things right. like that, that they're, they're liking to be in. As they get larger, they can swim up those streams more aggressively. So the fish that you're gonna be receiving today are gonna be around, uh, it's gonna be 18 months old is generally what you're gonna be receiving today for your site. And then, uh, so they'll still be another year and a half from being able to spawn. Um, so they may or may not be able to spawn in your pond, but if anybody's buying fish for their own pond stocking, um, the natural reproductive cycle is hard to do in a pond setup because you don't have running water flow like we do here. But uh, you're waiting three years till they start that spawning process and that whole circle of life begins again. I, I didn't realize they actually spawned. Like I didn't realize that, that farm raised fish would keep going. Yeah, so they can naturally reproduce, but you do need an ideal environment. Okay. So creating that in ideal environment so is a challenge. you have job security then, is what, what you're saying, is, is that <laughs> if, if you have a pond that you're stocking, it, they don't necessarily, they, they might breed, but they yeah. might not. Yeah. So that's that's not a bad. And it's, it's good to have a variety of, like a mixture of sizes in your pond when you're stocking it as well, just so you can catch some now and catch some later, and they're not right. all at the same size at the well, same time. This is our kind of our test run, because we don't exactly know how warm our water is going to get. I know last year we did a test run of like five really big fish yeah. and uh, the main predator, my brother, the wooded beardsman, ate them all. <laughs> so like they didn't have a chance to actually go through a winter and we also skate on that pond. So we would like to like freeze it over. So yeah. anyways, we'll give it a whirl, right? Yeah, no, we're excited to see how it comes together I, and I uh, we'll track through with you. All right, awesome. Let's go, let's go have a look. Sounds good. Look at the size of those fish. Uh, we haven't dunked any GoPros and we're just making okay. biosecurity to make sure we're not contaminating the water. I think Don's got the GoPro. And he can uh, he can dunk them in the uh, and see them swimming. There's like thousands of fish in these these tanks. That's crazy. So Clark, these these tanks here, these upper tanks with the really big fish, these are what your breeding stock? Yeah. So we have our own genetics program that we've been developing for quite a while. Uh, so we produce around six million eggs a year internally with our own breeding program, and uh, so we're selecting for growth, disease resistance, and. Uh, overall spawning time as well. We're trying to expand our spawning window to eight to nine months of the year as opposed to the four months that we're dealing with now. And um, so these fish are, like I said, they start spawning at three years old and uh, they will typically be productive spawners for another four years after that. Crazy, so how, how old are these? These are three year old fish? Three to six years, Okay. Yeah. So like, do you have, do you have like, I don't know, statistics on the oldest fish you have? Do you, can you tell? Yeah, we have had some fish uh, live up to nine years old um, but we do have an ideal environment here as well so it's uh, we want to help them be as successful as possible and as healthy as possible as well. Eyed eggs uh, so these would be able to hatch in around eight days depending on the temperature eight to ten days um, it takes around 18 to 20 days for them to get to this uh, stage of development after fertilization um, so then what we do is we put these into trays they're hatched in there then they're moved into troughs when they um, hatch they have the yolk sac still on their belly and then we'll um, once they're up on feed we move them in, into a different style of tank and we'll just take a quick shot here of what fish look like after uh, about four months of uh, growth after fertilization. Clark's saying there's 125,000 fish in here, and uh, 
You've named them all. Yeah. They're all named Nemo. We keep on looking for them. Yeah. Sometimes you find them. Finding but, uh, Nemo. He's right. No. No. That's not there. No, that's not him. Yeah, we keep track of everything that uh, goes into the tank as far as feed, any mortality rates, all the fish that go in. Data management is, is a very critical part of our of our role here as uh, caring for the fish that we have. So you need to know all the variables to make sure that you have the healthiest fish possible in case mortalities or any bacteria infections start to come up. Just like in a natural environment, um, you have to be careful with your environment. So it's crazy. That's a lot of fish. Good, good. What's this old girl gonna hold? Don't wanna make that call. <laughs> so is this a, uh, this is basically a scuba tank we're hooking up to this thing? Uh, similar, yeah, that'd be a good comparison, comparison anyways. It's called puck stone, so these are a bit of a modular approach. These are our extras, so they're not the best, but for what you're doing, they'll be perfectly fine. All right, so now we gotta get these fish back to the pond because they have a limited amount of oxygen, and uh, we've got a little bit of a drive, and hopefully the old Chevy Silverado makes it, uh, you know, not that much weight on there. We'll give her a whirl. So, yeah, there, it's, it's got air now. That's good. Well, awesome. sir. We're all set. Thank you. Thank you and, very much. And uh, happy fishing. All right. Awesome. Hopefully it goes we'll fantastically you, swimmingly. We'll let you know how it works out. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thanks. See you, Clark. See ya. See you guys. Well, we're gonna stop for lunch. <laughs> we can't. We can't eat raw fish. So we're gonna get a burger. I got uh, worst case. I got A and W. I gotta go to because there's no McDonald's anywhere nearby. So we're just gonna get a burger. I know. I didn't. I didn't realize we were gonna actually pass a, a, a fast food place. Fried egg sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I could get a double buddy burger with only mustard on the burger with a fry and a root beer. What's the ETA on that? Sorry? How long is that going to take? Um, when you will get the window, it, it will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got some live fish on my truck. I didn't realize it was going to take a half an hour to wait in line. We will try to sell fire so I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sounded pretty apathetic about that. Did he? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, your fish are gonna die. Sorry, it takes 45 minutes to get fast food. Ah! That's life in the drive through. And your food, have a nice Thank day. you. It wasn't worth the wait. Other than I should have went, I should have stuck to McDonald's going to A and W.
took it fast food, took a half an hour. still doesn't appear the air is working oh they're get they're getting that one's, that one's got to go down soon all right they're at the surface there okay you want me to just take a scoop yeah just scoop and go get, get the get this guy he's got to go okay here. get as many as you can in there and just boot it go Ready? let him go I don't think there's any left. I think I got the ball. Oh, that's cost crutchy rutted for you. Oh, I shouldn't have had that burger. Were those words? Kacha kacha words there? I think so. I thought they were words. <laughs> cross country. Cross, cross country cross. rutted. That's what I said, wasn't it? That's what I felt like I said. That's cross country rutted. I said that. How many fish are in there? I didn't count them. We should have counted them. Well, we can go back to the footage and maybe count them. How? I don't know. We got a fish here, and uh, we move. I moved the uh, fish from one pond or other pond to this pond before, and. Now he wants to go, but we, we, it took me all day to make, have him recover because we only had a little bit of oxygen in the bucket, the small bucket, and we didn't, didn't, didn't do it right. But it took them all, all day to recover, and they just sat, you know, as long as you can keep their, uh, them from turning over, they recovered. But it took them a long time. And these ones are just, I think the water is really cold down here compared to what they're in. It's like a ridiculous obstacle course. When did John your turn? It's <laughs> a good run, eh? Yeah. So do it bad. one more time. Go. <laughs> oh, whose turn is it now? That burn. <laughs> We uh, managed to get them all in the pond without having any of them belly up. There was some that were a little questionable in the in the tote, but uh, we managed to actually stand them back up in the pond. So if you saw a little bit of white, you kind of used the. My brother's got a big stick. Yeah, there might be one. A stick, and he like he, you toss, you right them, and they kind of get their. They sit there and they recover for a little bit. Uh, but it seems uh, like we we're probably like right now we're at 100 percent. I imagine we might be down to 99% survival rate once we're uh, once everything's said and done. But uh, anyways, uh, so just to recoup on that, Linden Fish Hatchery was the guy that supplied the uh, the fish for this pond. If you guys have your own pond and you're looking to stock your pond, they supply fish um, from itty bitty fish all the way up to like you know five pounders or 15 pounders even if you wanted like really large fish and you just didn't want to mess around with growing them. The idea behind the size of fish that we picked was that we want a kind of variety of them because we want to grow them over the season and uh, potentially harvest them in the fall. So that's, uh, that's, that's attainable. So you can just actually, you know, call them up and, and put your order in over at Linden Fish Archery. The link will be in the description below. And uh, their fishing, their public fishing pond is open on June 4th. If you guys want to go there in person and go catch yourself some fish, maybe take the family out and uh, make a day of it, go catch some fish. Pretty certain you'll catch one. I don't know. <laughs> if history has anything to say, you're going to probably catch some fish at that pond. But uh, yeah, it's a great place to go hang out for the day.
if they can keep their back upright, they're good. Can if they turn, kind of film them there. He wants to turn over still. Like, dude, you got to stay the right way. They can't do both at the same time. They struggle to stay up. Go swim. I don't know if that's a mistake or not, but if he starts swimming around, he seems to be going now. He's going now. As long as he doesn't go upside down, he might have to be okay. If you look over here, you can actually see them all just kind of hanging, hanging low, just breathing. All right, so these fish have been basically hand fed their entire life. So I have a bunch of fish food that I'm going to broadcast in this thing daily in order to feed my fish. And uh, I've got a plan for an automatic fish feeder. I'm going to retrofit a uh, deer feeder to uh, to kind of sprinkle my food out daily on, uh, on intervals that, uh, that's coming from uh, Cabela's Bass Pro Shops. They're, uh, they're mailing it to me. I think, I don't know, they pure later FedEx it out there, but it, it's on its way. So that'll be in a, in a follow up video of feeding these guys. And I've got a couple other plans in order to kind of take the workload of feeding these fish off the table. So it's one less thing you got to do once you automate the process. That'll be pretty cool. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Trees 